For the flower stem, I'm using the chrome green with a tail of a couple of fingers. I'm just going to squeeze that to soften it a little bit. And then I'm going to make um, flower petal loops of about five fingers. I'm just twisting together and passing that knot and nozzle through. Giving my balloon a squeeze again, making a loop that is approximately the size of the first one, then taking that knot and nozzle and just wrapping it around that second loop, and then a third loop. Okay, so that's what you've got. By this time you should be fully inflated. I'm just gonna squeeze these up a little bit, just give them the smallest amount of shaping. For my loop pin, I'm using two 60s, which I've tied together into duplets, and I've got tails of four to five fingers, okay? So you're going to need four duplets. So take two of your duplets and just twist them together, okay? And then take your other two and do the same thing. Okay, so you need to place your second cluster of four on top of the first for offset. So you've got a spoke coming out uh, in between each of these uh, quadrants here, okay? And then from your lower layer, bring up the, two, the first two balloons that are opposite one another, and then the other two balloons, okay? So you've trapped these balloons here from that second layer. Grasp hold of all four and twist, twist them all together. Okay. And then we need to position the balloons so that we've got a 260 positioned in between the 260s from the lower layer. And then we do the same thing with this layer here. We bring the balloons up from this layer. And then once we've got all four together, we twist them together. And I find it easier to do it this way uh, by having the, this bit resting on the table. find it easier to see what's going on, okay? And then we're going to take the balloons from this layer, take the ones opposite one another, the ones here, bring them up, and just hold them and twist them together. And then we're going to do that again with this layer. The ones that are opposite one another. Fold of them and twist. things have gone a bit wobbly it's because we've been pressing down on them and then we continue so as you're doing this just make sure that you've got one balloon one 260 from the lower layer poking through these um, two here continue until our looping is the size you want.
And to finish off, just take the lower layer and wrap it into this section here. So we're bringing everything up to the same level. So at this point, I'm just wrapping them in one at a time, giving them a squeeze, wrapping them in. Gets a bit, um, everything gets a bit, a bit full here, a bit hard to grasp. So, there you go. so that's what you end up with. I then snip off the ends. four at a time. So I'll wrap two together around a little bit and then I'll tie the four ends together. Put it tight and then I do the same thing with what's left. So I'll wrap two down at a time. Just grab a hold of those. And then tie the four together. Okay, and then I trim off these ends to about an inch or so. Okay, so that's what you've got. What you need to do at the top here is hide. The nozzles so you can see a nozzle poking through this lower layer so I just took it underneath and I do the same thing with these I find it this is better to do just tucking underneath than trimming off um, because if you trim them off they tend to sort of poke up a little bit and then you can take your loop in and take the strands at the bottom here and I actually find it's easiest to pull these ends into the base like this, into the flower petal loops, and then take the looping head and wrap that around the loops of the, um, the green balloon. Um, and I, I find that's easier to do. Uh, I'm holding on to the ends of the looping head until I'm happy. A bit more upward shaping to that, and then when I'm happy, I'm going to very carefully, if I can, trim off any excess. If it's if it's all a bit close uh, and you're worried about popping, um, then just wrap in the ends, which is what I'm doing at the moment. I can get away with doing that. I don't need to trim off anymore. Sometimes, if you just leave the ends that little bit long, uh, they do need be trimmed off with the scissors. Because these are such um, large flowers and they're quite wide, uh, they can be difficult to gather together into a bouquet. And so one of the things I do, I use monofilament line. This is 25 pound line, which is a little bit too heavy for what I'm going to do. If you've got eight pound line, that's absolutely fine. So what I do, I fold this in half approximately, and then I wrap it around the base of the central flower. You have, to, you have to do it carefully because this line can tear the balloons. So you have to be very careful when you're using this, okay? And then I want this one to be a little bit higher. So I'm just gonna pull this across, this line across here, and wrap into the flower petals on this next flower, okay? And then I'm going to do the same here, just pulling it across 
and wrap it in. I've made a very floppy bow out of a piece of organza and what I'm going to do now is just pass the line through the back of that knot there in the bow and pull into the base of this central flower. So I'm just using that line to secure the bow in position. Just wrapping it around the base of the loop pin and around the leaves. You can use a little bit more line to secure the top of the uh, loop pins in position, just so that they um, hold together. And the good thing about this is people don't notice it. They don't even notice that it's there. So you don't want to tie it too tightly. And I've got a Chrome 260 with the tip end snipped off and I'm just going to use that to secure these stems together so they hold together. I'm just tying that high up uh, and snip off. And there you've got a really lovely looping bouquet. I'll see you again in the next video.